CNBC TV 18 Weekender. Welcome back. By the way, Farah, you said that the meal is over. Uh, I am, I'm assuming after no, all, no, no, that, no, no, all no, no. that much it I'll tell you, I'll explain you to you. No meal is complete without sweets. Like in Bengali, they say, Modhu reno shama poyo. So, I, whether you're full or not, I will, I'm going to give you a very innovative, you know, dessert of ours, which is called the Rambutan. Oh, is it Good this one? Yeah. Okay, right, right here. Rambutan. Well, I'll be honest, I just about saved enough space to actually accommodate a dessert. No, no, I'm sure that you will not regret. This is Wow, this is, this is fancy, I must say. Yes. I told you about the innovation of presentation, right. etc. So, all this is being done by the new innovation team. The new innovation team. Right, yeah, right. right. And Avik, right, as you pointed out, has been doing a lot of work on that front. But initially, were you resistant to the new ideas that he was bringing? Oh, forward? I'm being very honest with you. We almost had a like a you know uh, the movie called Shakti Bachchan and <laughs> you know Dilip Kumar. Right. So we you know you uh, you know Gen X Gen Y. Right. So a lot of lot of resistance in the beginning mm -hmm. and in terms of doing things. But he somehow you know made his way through and ensured that things happen and then you know when you give results and when you come out with good things in life and understand the space mm. I'm very flexible but in the initial moments since you've been doing a business with a traditional mind mm. it takes you a little time for the mindset so to So there's a classic generation gap so Absolutely. to speak so what is it that really cut ice with you? See I'll tell you uh, very honestly the Hoppy Pola right. for that matter the space that and the kind of innovations we have done here mm -hmm. and we are doing in you know the Sakinaka restaurants mm -hmm. everybody today the youngsters are not eating too much they are eating a little bit of junk food or they eat a bite mm -hmm. these are finger foods that they eat mm -hmm. so when they go across so the portions I'm very particular about the portions right. have to be very large and you know so that people are completely not cheated and they will always feel that no we can take a doggy back home but then he says that, listen dad, nobody is nobody's, nobody's interested in you know eating so much or taking a doggy bag. Mm. So you make it smaller, but price it cheaper. So the, the whole combination has over a period of time worked and people are actually, and that's the reason we, even in mainland China, we've got a uh, regular and a large. Right. So that people who want to eat four pieces, they do it. And then if they want to order another one, if there are six people or five people, they order a large portion. You know, you're talking about the doggy bag system. Uh, you've talked about online ordering, in fact, becoming 20% of your revenues. Have you experimented or is there any talk about uh, expanding into that side of the business and online service to probably take your food? Um, we are working on an app. We are right. working on a dedicated app, but you see what has happened is that the you know the the new services which have come in the form of Zomato mm. or or uh, Swiggy. So these are the people who are much more people are actually going on to them rather mm. than coming to a speciality app. Is it because they have the first mover advantage? One second is that they are not just serving our restaurant hundred odd. They are serving it from any restaurant. So you know you naturally go to them and then right. take your choice. But still we are developing an app mm. dedicated to ourselves. Uh, dedicated to your how soon can we expect that and uh, three four months three four months and when that happens how big do you see the uh, the delivery business in fact becoming as part of your overall revenue pie I, I personally feel that it can go up by six eight percent for sure six eight percent for sure that. yeah you know you've also been looking at uh, locations outside India Dhaka London yeah. Dubai you're looking yeah, at very, uh, very seriously and we are also we have Dhaka we also have Tanzania Tanzania is yeah right. so go, going forward we are looking at London we had a bit of problem thanks to you know uh, the old uh, sorry uh, you know the new prime minister who's come in there and she may be changing certain immigration rules so after that we'll be able to get a clearance because we've got the space and everything ready right so what is happening is that I personally feel that we serve food our service and food is global standards okay. and if, if, if the food and services of global standards there's no reason why you can't compete there because the per Head revenue is much more. Mm -hmm. People eat more. People eat out more often than India. So the return on investment is much bigger. What is your advice to youngsters who would like to get into the restaurant business? What should they be mindful about? Uh, they should be mindful about the rentals. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, as I was talking to you sometime yeah. back, that the New York or London is almost equal or cheaper sometimes mm -hmm. uh, to a Bombay or a Delhi or a, you know, a metro which is right. grown. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is very important to, to do a model which has very good store and to economics. experiment with, with formats. Yes. And, and, and ensure that, you know, you innovate yourselves 
and don't just be in the business for the heck of it. Mm. Try and see the store economics. You see, there is a lot of glamour in this business. Mm. That glamour portion brings in a lot of people, youngsters. Mm. But I can tell you it's very, very detailed hard work. I'd like to end this conversation on a sweet note. So, my last question to you. What is the sweetest memory that you have of the past two decades that you have spent in the restaurant business? Uh, once I was in Calcutta uh -huh. and, and, you know, I mean, it was actually uh, winter time. Mm. And it so happened that there was one lady mm. who was, elderly lady, who was sitting in the restaurant with her family. And the temperatures had gone down, the ambient temperatures outside. Mm. And we had not actually adjusted the AC. It was just December or so. So she was kind of shivering. Mm. And uh, it so happened that I had a shawl in my bag. You know, I was carrying one. So I actually told one of those captains of ours to go and give it to her because she's... And she understood that and she got up and hugged me. You know, and then thanked me for that. So I think it was a very touching moment for me. Absolutely. We thank you very much for hosting us here today, for taking us through your journey. And we wish you and your team the very best of luck. Thank you so much for joining us thank on you, the Father. weekend. Pleasure. Thank you so Pleasure much, sir. Well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. CNBC TV 18 Weekender.